Okay, very good. Good morning, good afternoon, um, everybody. Thank you very much for joining uh, this webinar today. Uh, we welcome all the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and their parents. Uh, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Smirik Paul here for today's very interesting topic, uh, leadership in STEM, right? We want to be leaders in STEM. And he's gonna tell us about what are the emerging STEM careers, what majors lead to those careers, uh, what are the top research areas for the next decade, and how can students get into research? Um, this talk hopefully will be a tremendous help for the high school and um, middle school students. Uh, they will learn how to avail themselves um, these opportunities, uh, become leaders in STEM, uh, and what are the different careers they can um, think of uh, choosing for themselves. Uh, this talk is a uh, a joint collaboration between uh, STEM Matters um, and the Young Professional Society. Uh, it's our sister organization from UK. Uh, STEM Matters, our mission is to inspire students to excel in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and environment matters by nurturing their critical and analytical thinking skills. And the mission of Young Professional Society is to help support and change the lives of youth by providing personal and professional development opportunities. It aims to bring to the forefront a more progressive, accomplished, and enlightened younger generation of people who will be the representatives and leaders of their communities and who will contribute po positively towards the wider society. Um, and now the introduction of our um, great, wonderful um, speaker, Dr. Smirik Paul. He's a professor and chair of the Electrical Engineering Department at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Um, he is a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry and a senior member of uh, IEEE. He has been a distinguished uh, lecturer for IEEE um, EMBS since uh, 2016, and he has published extensively in the areas of nanobio interfaces at genes, proteins, and cellular levels, lab on a chip, cancer diagnostics using nanotechnology, applications of uh, nanotextured materials in biosensing, and nanoscale devices for single molecule interrogation identification. He has also led work on developing high speed imaging approaches and novel algorithms for uh, single cell analysis in real time. So I have uh, uttered or said a lot of interesting words. Uh, don't be afraid. T today's talk hopefully will give you some idea that how you can in future become one of those whose uh, bio will be read like the, uh, the way I read it for Dr. Samir Iqbal. And somebody will be talking about your accomplishments that others will say, oh, I want to be this, and I want to do this, right? So with that, uh, Dr. Paul, thank you very much. We are very honored to have you. Over to you, please. Thank you, Brother Shaquille. This is really an amazing morning, and I'm happy to be in your company. STEM Matters is something which we started to get uh, young people like you involved. So here are some links, and we can share these uh, later on as well. Uh, by the way, I see some of my old students in this room as well. So good to have you back. And they uh, they went through summer program last year, but we'll be starting new year again with the new session. So this is the link for that. I ask young people that, do you like to travel? That's a very fundamental question. We all as human beings, you like to travel or not? You, you guys can just put thumbs up, you can put yes, no in chat. This is a, going to be a very informal kind of discussion. More than telling you, I would like to explore a few things with you today. All right, so you like to travel. So this is one of the picture I think I took in Dublin. And why I say travel? Because I have traveled around the world for free, not just for free, they pay you for travel how we get there, how do we get to in a position where people invite you to their places, to hear from you, to learn what you do. And that's the kind of uh, things we would explore today. But this happens when you develop some leadership skills. You, you do good stuff, you do 
not just good stuff, good stuff in areas that matter. Now, areas that matter, that's not something that you, uh, you would know or you would do in your uh, home. You have to go out. You have to get into good schools. You have to get not just in good schools, in good labs. And these are all the things that we'll talk today. I myself, I came in to U state in 2001. I went to school in Pakistan. I was trained to be an engineer who would just repair things, not design things. But I got into this company, a good school, good GRE score. And, you know, I was not a scout, but I was a Navy officer. So I wore uniform for about 10 years. So I did, they did lots of things. So lots of leadership, which you guys are also doing. Why does it matter? Because that helps you to get the, the confidence in you that you can do it. So when I came to Purdue, I had learned all these things that I'm showing here. I, I had no idea what's computer engineering. Then I learned software engineering and I taught software engineering. And you know, can, does somebody know the Purdue's fame? Why is it famous? Neil Armstrong, of course, many of us know Neil Armstrong. Who was Neil Armstrong? He was an astro uh, astronomer. Astronaut. First, first human, first human on the face of the moon, right? And he said something like a, a small step for a man, but a giant leap for humanity. Something like that. And he said one so, small step for uh, he, uh, me and a large step for mankind. Exactly. So, but how does this get enabled? It gets enabled when you go to good schools, when you study in the company of, or you study from big people. Here I've written some names, strong in devices. So, you know, computer devices, all the computer chips. So Purdue has some of the professors who have written textbooks, who have written like at the top of the line work. So I studied from them and Purdue had, and, and many other universities, and we'll talk about that. They, they have done some things, first things, like Purdue did bio nano program, they had the biomedical engineering program, the first one in, uh, in the world. So these are the things which help you be part of that group, be part of that company. And I was lucky to get an, a teaching award there as well. And then went around the world. This right-hand picture is from, right-hand above picture is from Turkey, a place called Gumoshane, which is like, far away from Istanbul, in the mountains, beautiful place. So when you do good stuff, people invite you and just, they put you in the newspaper. So I was not just, I've been in news, I've met Nobel laureates. You guys know Nobel Prize, right? So I've, there are a few Nobel laureates that I met from around the world, German, British, Israeli. They've done good stuff. This gentleman in the center, Dr. Dan Sheckman, you know, he, his research was on asymmetrical patterns in Muslim art. So he has published about Muslim designs that we see in Spain and how they don't, they are not symmetrical, but they repeat in, in, in themselves. So these are some amazing people. So you get a chance to meet them. There are some pictures that I've taken from all over the world, from New York City to Greece to Bangladesh to uh, Hawaii to Venice to uh, Italy. This the right hand top picture is an opera in Italy. So it becomes enabled when you work hard, and it's what does it take from going from uh, just being a Boy Scout or being in part of a program to being a graduate from places like MIT. It's not rocket science, but maybe it is. But how do you do that? So these are steps involved. There are certain things that one can do, but more than doing things, it's important to have a passion to, to 
to learn from some things and to see some people who have done some of those things. And all these places, I have visited many of these places already. And, and I tell you that all these places are looking for students, students like you. They are the places which have a common ingredient of good students. That's the only thing they have common. Once they get good students, they know how to get you into projects which are worthy of pursuing. But how do we, how do we know which areas to get into? How do we know which major will get me into what career? And if I were looking for research, where do I look for those projects? So these are some of the questions which I thought we can explore together today. Now, when we say STEM, what do you think about STEM? You can type, you can say a few things. What do you think I about think, uh, STEM? I think STEM is like, what it stands for, like science or uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Right. So what does, what do you get? What's the picture that comes to your mind when you think about STEM? Something related to like science to or technology. Right. So if you think about science, what comes to your mind? Spaceships. Spaceships, right. Okay, very good. When you think about technology, what comes to your mind? Technology or robots. Robots. All right. So if you think about engineering, what comes to your mind? Um, technology. Computers? Yeah. Computers? Micro Microsoft. Holograms, ships. iPhone, device you are using right now. So they have slight differences, but they're part of the same thread. So science would be more fundamental, maybe doing things in flasks, test tube, mixing chemicals maybe working on fundamental equations and technology is where you have products and engineering is then how do you design those products? And of course, mathematics, which is the underlying thing about, we take it a step further now, environment matters because we are doing things which are not sustainable. So how do we have sustainable impact on environment? Okay. so. I'm happy that we have some vision, but how do we get into those careers? That's a major uh, connection that we have to make. And, and this is what we'll do. I will share some of the next grand challenges that many intelligent minds have come together and they have uh, agreed that these would be the big things going forward for next 20, 30 years. And when you say, they have predicted predictions are predictions that's just that what happens is is a natural evolution when great minds come together young minds come together we can think of things that nobody has thought before and that's the whole idea of stem that's the whole good thing about stem that we discover new things we develop new things we discover new things but we'll we need a framework. So that's something which I will use to the grand 14 grand challenges of engineering. There's a society called National Academy of Engineering. A few years ago, they came together and they said, these are the major big challenges that we have to deal with going forward. And, and we don't have to really stick to them because many things have evolved into many other things and we'll see how. We talk about renewable energy. Right. So, can somebody tell me what is what do you what does it mean when they say renewable energy? Energy that doesn't um, hurt the environment and can be used over and over again. Over and over again. So, from one form to the other, the thing is that the number one source of energy right now is fossil fuel, gas. But we keep on pumping gas. It it's not renewable. We one day we we we're gonna probably maybe not in my lifetime, but maybe not in next 100 years, but someday we're gonna run out of the gas. So we wanna think about that, what may be other ways that don't run out? 
one of them is solar energy, for example. So solar energy, we get sunlight all over the place. How can we use that, tackle that? Not just use that, but how do we distribute that smartly so we don't lose energy on the way? So there are, solar is just one example. There is, there is mechanical ways of changing energy from one type to the other. Like you see big fans at some places, which are taking the wind energy, right? And converting electrical energy from that. How do we store the energy? Right now we, we, are, we have already, we have cars that have electrical power stored in that, but they have limited range. They can go up to maybe 300 miles or 400 miles. Can we have better batteries that we can store energy for uh, thousands of miles? So these are all the areas where a lot of work needs to be done. Many of you are maybe have already seen those VR things, right? So you can see and you can feel like immersed in the 3D uh, thing. Can you give me an example of a game where we, they use VR? I'm not saying we should play too much video games, but yeah, we play video games. Give me an example of a VR game, Spider-Man, all right? So, you know, seats, Beat Saber, super hot, all right? So you have a bunch of games where they use VR. But you know what? Apart from gaming, there are real world applications where you can use VR. So you can train people to do surgeries. You can train people to do, they are using now to do the real state as well, where, especially after COVID, where people cannot go to see new houses. So they are making those VR things where you can be virtually in a house. Video games, I, I like this meme where they turned PS5 into a coffee maker. But, but the idea is that there are applications for military, for medicine, a whole bunch of areas where we want to use VR. I'm just sharing applications and then we'll talk how can you do all this stuff? What may be the directions for you to get into so you can build the next generation VR thing? You know, we talk about VR where we are just looking at things, but the next thing is that can we control things just by thinking about them? Can we, right now we have some devices where they can have people who are disabled, that they cannot move their body, they can, they have an interface that they can think about doing and they can move a mouse, they can click on things. But that's very early stage. The goal is that can we interface computers with human brain or at least have computers that can have intelligence like human. Right now, you guys are sitting with me, right? So you guys are looking at the screen, you are reading, you may be distracted by things in your room. Maybe you are drinking, you are eating. As well. So we do all these things together with one brain. But our computers are still nowhere close to do that kind of uh, multitasking. So that's a major thing that can we interface computers? Can we learn from a human brain and do those things? That's another huge area of, of work that we need to do. Medicine. We talk about uh, bringing up new medicine or we are talking even about uh, gene therapy. You know who got the Nobel Prize in chemistry this year? Does somebody know? Or what did they get it for? They got it for a technology where they can edit genes. So they can, CRISPR, yeah, Imad said CRISPR, yeah, Imad is a student or a parent. So I got an answer from Imad which said CRISPR, Imad Ahmed, student, yeah, fantastic. So CRISPR, they can edit genes. So the whole genetic thing in our bodies, they can take bad genes out or maybe they can put good genes in as well. So that's an example of molecular scale healthcare, but at large scale, we need lots of new things in, in medicine. We, 
for example, every we have headache, we take Tylenol, right? But Tylenol is like one drug everybody can take. But when we talk about diseases, say it again. So we want to make superhuman as well. That's what Jonah said. But think about it. Many, many uh, diseases like cancer or uh, neurolo neurological diseases, every person has different kind of genes involved, different kind of biomarkers involved. So they need specific drugs. So you cannot give one drug to everyone. So that's another thing. So engineering better medicine, not just that. We want to look inside our body without putting, probing any needles or anything. So we want scanning machines. Yeah, we have very good scanning machines but we may want 3D scanning. We want maybe 3D x-ray. There's a one company who just came uh, with a real system that can do 3D x-ray. Think about it. So, but this is something which is not there yet. And, and here's Chris Park, which, which two ladies who got the Nobel Prize, there are unlimited possibilities with that. And I'm, I've written some crazy ideas, designer drugs, designer treatments, even designer babies. We do this exercise in one of our STEM innovation program that what can be possible implications of, of doing CRISPR or doing gene editing? Yeah. Yeah, so barista engineering better medicine for COVID-19. Exactly. So but think about it it's been more it's been about a year and we are still struggling with vaccine and and having but so we need to engineer better solutions now we said ethical and regulatory concern exactly we'll talk about that that's another area that we just don't need people making stem but we need people who make stem and they are trained in dealing with ethical and regulatory issues as well which unfortunately right now we don't. We, we train people to do just STEM without giving them a real world uh, idea. So that's another important area. And, and I'll talk about National Science Foundation and what is the next vision for NSF going forward, which will impact you guys. Health informatics. So again, if we take image of human brain, for example, we should be able to access it all over the place we should be able to get the, the blood work also with that. We should be able to get the, uh, for one patient, the whole information for last 20 years, for example. And I, I've just written a few examples here that what we want in health informatics. Now, we talk about informatics, you're talking about data. We're talking about information related to every person. Every person for, from the day they are born, maybe, to old age. Why? Because that data can tell us a lot about a person. And this data is already there. If you look, up, look at these things, many of us do use all of those things, or our parents do use many of those things. So we have created this data already. It's already there. We are struggling to uh, ways to find how do we access all that data and get that unstructured data into some structure where we can find some relationships where we can learn from this data, how people are behaving. If we get there and we are gonna get there, think about it, everything will be data driven. When I say everything, oh, break apart everything that we do. We do research, discovery, marketing, media, games, decision making, programming, storytelling, movies, songs, graphics, I learning. Have a question. Mm -hmm. yes. How does farming be data driven? That does not make sense. Farming be data driven, okay? How does that make sense? So think about it. The crops that come out from one area, what was the weather, how much water, what were all the conditions that went into get specific yield of a crop in one place? Can we take that data and put the, emulate it at other place? If you find the best combination, we might know this region and that region is good for a rice crop in this region and that region, predictions based on what we have seen in the past, we can predict how are we going to get yield of 
crops in the future. Think about it. I have been to so many parts of the world I've seen, they grow tea in Turkey on the slopes of mountains. It, ha it has a very specific pH of the soil, the moisture in the air, temperature of that region, the fertilizer they use. Now, if I want to grow that tea here in Texas, can I find a place that where I can emulate the same environment? Probably yes, but that data is there, but it has not been collected and analyzed. But uh, Musab is saying farming tools, uh, there's, there's unlimited uh, opportunities and ideas on this. I have thought th about this for maybe half an hour to make this, but think about it. If, if we put few minds together, we can go and make maybe 10 more slides like this where we can see exactly where data can be involved. You couldn't farm without data even a thousand years ago. All right, so I, I, I like these comments and this discussion. This is, this is amazing. This discussion is what we don't have and we need to have because that will inspire us to get into those careers. All right, so now what's the thing? The data is there, it's unstructured. It's been collected at different places. You know, even when, you, uh, when your parents drive you from one place to the other place, the data is recorded. The data is somewhere where they are seeing how fast you drive, how much acceleration you give. Do you like to go from zero to 60 in five seconds or you go easy on your car? How many turns you have taken? The gas, how much gas has been used? So they are gathering some data somewhere, but can we use that data to, to predict the future? So this, this is the next big thing. It's already happening where we want to use machine learning tools to understand how things have been happening. Okay, so uh, there's a question, if everything is data driven, can people go unemployed? People will become smarter. People will, there'll be new opportunities to do with that. So somebody has to build that design, but there'll be some people who may be able to commercialize that idea, monetize the data and how it can be used. So there'll be, uh, the no doubt many old jobs will go away but many many new jobs will come out the think about it but there's a, there were some numbers that probably 80 percent people now live in big cities and compared to 50 years ago when 80 percent people lived in countryside in villages but now people are moving to big cities when people are coming to big cities, the infrastructure needs to be updated. Infrastructure needs to be modified, made smarter. We need to know where people are living, how they are moving around, where their jobs are, so we can, we can place hospitals in the right area, school in the right areas. So use that data to control services, for example that will bring new jobs. To control movement of people, there's so many things that are emerging in how do we make our cities and make our livelihood easy. You know, the, the most gas in air is nitrogen. We are still struggling, how can we use that nitrogen to our advantage? How can we get that nitrogen into our soil to fertilize it well. So what the thing called nitrogen cycle. That's another huge area in to make our ecosystem much more efficient. So we don't have to put chemical fertilizers. Instead, how can we get nitrogen recycled into our, our grounds? That's another main major big area of research. Whether we believe in climate change or not, we know for sure we need to get the carbon back in. So we can 
at least do some reversal of the harm that we do by burning fossil fuel, by burning coal. So that's another huge area of interest. Now, interestingly, we, the scientists work on things, but there is, there's politicians who make decisions on where the next uh, 10 years, 20 years investment will be. So I know UK for sure has mandated that by 2030, all cars will be electric. There'll be no uh, gas driven cars. It's a, it's a big aim, but it's possible. In US also, we have heard that President-elect has said that they, they wanna get rid of gases in car in I don't know how many years. But it's happening, it's gonna happen. And these are the areas where we need to get into. These are the areas where we need uh, people to come in to do some good work. We talked about medical, we, we know COVID, but overall in science, we need new tools. We need science to develop new tools to maybe look at smaller things, manipulate smaller things, even look at celestial objects and learn on things how what's happening in space. How, like for example, there's a lot we can learn from how things have evolved on other planets, the soil composition on other planets. Even we are doing experiments in space. Right now they are working on a COVID-19 uh, treatment in space, how things would happen because lack of gravity has some things, very important things happening on living things. Maybe they're plants or they're human. But all these careers, all these different things to do, what, how do I fit in? What is my strength or my weakness? Is it we are just too awesome for all this? Or do we have to work hard to get into this? There is a, there are specific differences between what you call as a career and your education path, or what we call major, all right? Everybody knows what is a major? Tell me, what is a major? Is it that army rank, captain major, or what do we, what do you mean by major? So, yeah, Mohtadi, your speciality, okay. What subject you choose to focus on most, all right, very good. So every institution, academic institution, has the certain uh, order of courses that they bring together. And they say, okay, if you do these order of courses, you will be majoring in certain subject. You will be majoring in electrical engineering. You'll be majoring in biology. You'll be majoring in... So, but if I study certain courses, does that mean I will become an astronaut? Or does that mean that I will become a car engineer? So... It just means that you're good in that type of, like, part of that course part of that course the thing is that many majors lead to one career or one major can lead to many careers so this is something I, many of us don't know or or sometimes it, there's a confusion that how do we make these things work so career is what do you want to do for the rest of your life or for next 20 years maybe, or you say, okay, I wanna work for uh, this kind of area and then maybe I want to get into that. So that's the, what we call as career. But the major is what kind of coursework you would go through in a, an institution to get into that career or into that profession. So, but you have to remember Many majors can lead you to one kind of career and you may go through one major and you can end up in many different careers. So here's an example for engineering. So on, on, the, on the white side, left-hand side, there are some careers like energy, industry, machines, 
manufacturing, materials, structures, technical sales, right? And on the, on the top side, on the sideways are some engineering majors. The, the core work that they would have designed around these majors, like biomedical, biosystem, materials, environment, industrial. So you see the, the, the shaded area is what would tell you, okay, you wanna work in say materials, you can be doing aerospace and work in materials, you can be doing biomedical, still materials. So there are a whole bunch of engineering things that you do and you will still be able to do, get into that career. Now, this is just a very, uh, and I would say in five year, six year old thing and made up for very specific traditional careers and traditional majors. Now let me hear, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I would want to be- Ideologist? Uh, Muhammad is still deciding. What's that word for if you- Think want about to it, study? so cardiologist? What's that word for if you want to Wild study animal life? Yes, sir. Animal life form was very much part of many, many majors, not just one major. ER doctor, veterinarian, architect. So, so amazing that you know, you know the career that you want to be. What I'm showing you today is the careers beyond those traditional careers that we know today. I'm talking about careers that are coming out for next 10, 20 years. NASA astronaut, NASA engineer, neurologist, YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, Mark Siddiqui is, wants to be a YouTuber. You can be YouTuber doing anything that you want. You don't have to be YouTuber just for being a YouTuber. But yeah, I like it. NBA player, Musa, yes, NBA player. So there's somebody who's just wants to run around a small court and bunch of tall guys trying to get one ball. They can buy their own balls and play with this all they want, but they want to play one. Streamer, space engineer, pilot. It's, it's amazing that what is the variety that you can go into, but trust me, there are, there's not just one way to get into doing what you want to do. There are many ways how you can get to do. Musab also wants to be a YouTuber. All right, so being a YouTuber, you need to bring niche to the table. You have to bring something that people want to hear about or talk about or listen about. So that's where getting your hands on special specialities will help you out. Aerospace engineer, fantastic. It's amazing. There are specific career paths and not just what I showed you. There are, you can go to Khan Academy. They have a kind of a, a list of what you can do. But I tell you, there are Tech and medical are considered to be the, the top most employers in USA. And what it's called, Zed, Zed said what it's called, Medivre has 1.2K subs. Fantastic. Somebody has 1.2K subscribers. Musab has a bunch of subscribers. Sibling world. All right. So there is. There are many ways how you can achieve your goals. But remember that the real value, this, this line that I've written on the lower right-hand side, is not in following what others are doing. Yaman, it's okay if you have 26 subs, I have 46, so it's not a big deal. You'll get there. Keep on doing the good work. The, but listen to me. The real value of spending all that money and time is preparing for the things that nobody know, knows about yet. That's what we would want to do. Build a new direction, a new dimension. So how do you fund your studies? There are many ways and we'll probably talk about it uh, some other time. I just wanna get to hear from you and maybe answer some questions if you have. And before we do that, when you 
get into school, talk to professors. Professors are looking for high energy students like you. They build their career based on students like you. Let me just go through. Yeah, so here's another thing. Many universities have research programs for undergrads, for high school kids, for middle school kids. Many universities have programs and camps for kids like you. So this is something which we also do, have STEM camp, STEM kind of a program where we build things. And trust me, if, you, if we thought that we, we had an advantage, then the rest of the world, no, that advantage is going away because now everybody has the level, level playing field. Everybody is coming to the same levels, whether you're from states or whether you are from uh, a developing country or any other country. All right, so I see there's discussion going on on subs. It's okay, don't worry, you'll get subs if you do good work. Talk to me, questions. Ibrahim. I see something funny going on. Questions? Uh, that, well, I'll just like to interject here. Um, so students, um, this is the time to talk to and ask questions to a professor in the university who has shared so many uh, different kinds of careers, majors. So you may have some questions or thoughts about, oh, I want to be this and I want to be that. How can I get there, right? So today is an opportunity for you to ask a person who knows a lot, who's been guiding, mentoring, coaching many, many people uh, from middle to middle school to all the way to the PhD students. So please use this opportunity. All right. So I may have missed some questions. Let me go through the list. Uh, there's one question that well, what is your opinion on investing things as a job? Inventing things as a job. So yeah. sorry. There, there are certain steps involved. So you, you may be an inventor, but the thing is that can you sell it? Or do you have access to people who would be able to market it or monetize it? Let me tell you, as professors, I know hundreds of professors who invent things, who build things, but are they able to sell it? That's the big question. If somebody is inventor and knows the steps of patenting, safeguarding the, the rights of that invention and either building product out of it or licensing it out, that's the best thing. If you can do that, yeah, sure, that's the perfect job. But think about it. There are steps involved where you have to get the data to prove it works. You have to get the patent issued. And then you need to get into licensing agreement or create prototype and bring it through the, the development process and market it. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing career. If that's what you want to do. Most of the, I want to invent a, I want, I was planning to invent a gadget that makes you understand a baby. All right, yeah, if you can get your hypothesis in place, get your experiments and you prove it works, that would be a patentable technology for sure. Maliha, can you please suggest career paths students should take for research or development AI or robotics? There are, three, four different ways you can go about it. Or maybe they're getting more and more how you can get into AI or robotics. Standard has been electrical engineering or computer science, where you come from hardware side, software side. And in research, you bring both of them together and make a machine, do what, it, what you want it to do, whether in a deterministic way, where you hard code what it's supposed to do. Or you do the AI where you have certain levels of depth that the machine can think about and make its decisions. Now, this is, there are biomedical engineering ways also how you can get into that, where you want to make a machine that can maybe 
look at cancer cells or, or get biopsy samples or maybe do scans that right now people do on people, right? Technicians have to do those things. There is, there is an architecture way into getting to that. There are civil engineers who are doing AI and robotics. There is 3D printing now where we want to create, now we are creating uh, implantable structures that can go into the body. So there are, Malika, there are many ways how we can get into AI or robotics. Navet, are you writing a STEM program? How is program different? All right, Navet Khan has asked, so, okay, there's a, if you see my screen, that's the link for the session we have. And please register and we can talk about it. And, and yes, we are starting a program. We already, we did a summer. We are, we, I have a, two teams right now who are uh, already in second stages of competitions, national, international competitions. So that's something which we'll be doing in January. And we have the, spring 2021 info session scheduled for December 13. And we'll talk about how it's different than what others may be doing. Emma, did, what did Bill Gates reject? What, did he sell his stuff his, or partners? All right, so that's interesting what Bill Gates did. You know, interesting thing is not what, what Bill Gates did. Interesting thing is what IBM did not do. IBM was the biggest computer manufacturer at that time, and they were they wanted somebody to write DOS, the disk operating system, a system that would run their computers. Bill Gates went with Microsoft DOS to them. He created operating system that IBM machines could use. IBM did not get exclusive license from him. So what they did, they, they put his system, sold computers, but Bill Gates could go and sell that directly to other companies as well. So what Bill Gates did, we can talk about in our STEM program, and that's a good case study of how you can build something and protect your rights. You can uh, license it to somebody without giving exclusive with those people, and that's what he did. You earn your free subscribers by subscribing to and liking other channel, maybe that's why. I don't know what's that question. Musab, is there going to be new jobs for running or coding AI? Oh, amazingly many, 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 many more jobs for running or coding AI. And I, I tell you, in 2001, I was teaching AI to Purdue undergrads. They, I, I would make them make games where two, one team would make one side of the game, the other would, they would do a real time chess with each other. So this is, uh, it's interesting that now everybody's talking AI, but yes, there'll be many, many more jobs on AI. So registration form link has been shared by brother Shaquille here. All right, so uh, Mr. Maliha is asking, can you give exactly what is done in STEM program? Yes, so we would, today I wanted to focus on STEM careers and what may be the next growth areas. But if you sign up for the registration, we'll, we'll talk more details on the just this upcoming STEM program we are running. Ibrahim, so a translator machine, who Mohtadi? All right, they're talking to each other. Moms are better baby translators than anything possible. Ibrahim had a comment on some other's idea. It's okay, but he's doing what an investor would do, would ask you a question and we should be ready to defend that. And that's what we do in our STEM program also. We work with each other on, on, on creating unique uh, selling points for our ideas and how, do we, how would we differentiate it, it from others. Uh, Dr. Kumar, uh, just a quick uh, introduction. So, <clears throat> Naveed Khan <coughs> excuse me, has asked about a uh, very interesting um, question. Uh, the STEM programs, does it have opportunities for Boy Scout work on approved Eagle Scout projects? I think that would be a very interesting marriage between the Boy Scouts and the STEM kind of uh, work that uh, people are doing. Um, mostly the kids, uh, the boys or the girls, they make, you know, small benches or kind of furniture for 
uh, different places and then get it done for for their Eagle project or for Girl Scout. I'm not sure what exactly what kind of project it's called. But I think um, we should elevate the discourse. We should increase the uh, kind of the challenge uh, space for, for our boys and girls. They should be doing more intellectual work, more interesting work um, to A, they will get that equal requirement done uh, and their, whatever equivalent for girls is there, um, uh, the girls can take care of that um, requirement. But also through in the process, they should be learning something as well. So I think um, uh, we can do an offline discussion with Navid. Uh, we, we, we can find out from the district to see uh, what kind of uh, STEM projects um, can be allowed so, to do Eagle. Eagle. Yeah, so Brother Navid, there is a whole range of service projects. So now this is something, again, not new in universities where we many projects, what we do is we call them service projects. The idea is they have to work, serve a real world problem. It may be a, a, a scanner for a, for a blind person where you can put a small kind of a chip on the end of the cane that can beep if there is anything. It may be as simple as putting a, a light controlled some activity, a sensor, and all these things are doable in simple team projects or individual projects. But what's missing is that coming from STEM background, I know the basic nut and bolts, how we can bring together. They, they can, there's cheap, uh, cheap machines, cheap computers available where you can code your things and custom build to do specific things. A project that one of the team I'm coaching right now, they're making, they called Smart Sock. So it's for diabetic patients where it can measure and sense if there's edema, if there is any injury to the foot, you know, diabetics, they cannot feel and their, their foot injuries are big major issues. So yes, so many such projects can be made with a service project and possibly would be uh, usable for, for Boy Scout uh, uh, approval, approval list. All right, Faiza asked, what can we do to get ourselves involved in basic research at the high school or college level? So now, every school is different, every college is different. What I believe, or we are, what we are doing is providing a uniform platform all across USA or even the world, where we want to want the kids to work on the projects that have a real world application. Now, how does it happen in your school or in your college is, is, is very, it, that would be, uh, beyond the scope because there'll be so variety, so much variety in different systems and all that. Does the STEM project like many facilities around the world or only in Turkey for studying? I don't know what is in Turkey, but yeah, there's STEM projects. Uh, I think she's uh, referring to, uh, this person is referring to our website, I guess. Did you talk about Turkey? Oh, the, those are programs for study abroad, which, in COVID situation have been suspended, but what we are doing now is working here. We may have need from developing world to do something for maybe clean water applications or sanitation projects that we can build here. And, but yeah, we'll not be going there at the, for foreseeable time because of the situation. All right. Assalamualaikum. 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 Uh, this is Maznaveb, the Scout Master of uh, Troop uh, 2054. Uh, a quick uh, couple of things uh, before you wrap up, uh, uh, Dr. Samir, if you allow. Please, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, regarding the STEM with the Scout, uh, uh, it, it's really interesting, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, the audience they know. Under BSA, there is a separate uh, scouting program that's called uh, STEM. Uh, STEM Scouts. And uh, this year, uh, 2020, the time kid of the year, uh, she's from Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken, she is uh, a STEM Scout. So she, uh, and I do have the link, I can uh, put it in the comment, uh, comment section so uh, kids can go ahead and uh, look into that. 
uh, to get uh, get to know what she did and uh, how she made to the time uh, kid of the year uh, thing. She is 15 years old. Um, the other thing regarding the Eagle project, normally the BSA, what they do is, uh, it's not like individual projects, rather it's, uh, they want to see how you lead a project with multiple people, delegate the work, how do you manage the time, the, the money that you collect, how things are going. So you need to, even if it's a STEM related project, probably Scout needs to a uh, little bit broaden their scope uh, to delegate and lead time management, how they get the things done. So of course, if you have an idea, talk to your Eagle advisor and get their opinion before you uh, uh, invest more time on your idea. Just uh, two things. Oh, very good. Thank you. So, all right. So we'll we'll follow up that, and we can talk to the scout masters and see how we can get the students engaged and make sure they follow their BSA requirements. I'm, I was looking up and there's another question I think I touched upon. The, what about the ethical and regulatory concerns with these technologies? What are your opinions on that? To be, to be frank, I tell you, the most important thing is to have kids trained in multiple domains. So right now I can tell you, even the medical degrees, are they're doing joint degrees like MD, PhD, MD, MBA, MD, JD, for the simple reason, new devices, new technologies come up with new ethical, legal, regulatory issues. And that's where we need to be trained because that's where the jobs will be. High paying, highly sought after jobs. All right, so let me see if there are any more questions. How data is managed? All right. So again, same issue applies with all these applications, how data is managed at GERD in an ethical and regulated way. Yes, sir. Again, we need more discussion, more trained people on, on both sides. Can there be one standard world agency that can maintain all of this data which trusted by all nations, companies, universities? It's, it's so interesting that we, we are facing a pandemic and governments are not ready to uh, follow one protocol, but that, does not mean we cannot have such thing maybe down the road, but yeah, it's more of non-STEM work than STEM work to, to do the regulations. All right, so let's see. I, think I just posted the link on the, in the chat box. Um, so students, uh, please provide us your feedback. It will take less than uh, 30 seconds. Uh, but your, your feedback, matters to us, uh, we will benefit from it, we'll understand how we did and how we can do better in the future. So please click on that and uh, share your feedback uh, while we are about to wrap up. Yeah, Salaam Alaikum, Dr. Samir, this is Kashif, I'm uh, Eagle Scout Advisor for Troop 2060. I have a question, is there a repository or place where uh, Eagle Scout or other scout can go and, and look up some ideas about STEM project because it may be a very new territory for a lot of the student or scouts uh, where they just want to think about or brainstorm what type of project they can do uh, in as part of their Eagle Scout uh, curriculum. So if you look at my slide, take a screenshot and run away with that. I'm telling you, there's so much can be done in just by data-driven approach on so many things. And, uh, I, I'm, and I'm not going to go into uh, specifics because each team has to organically develop how they want to address a specific issue or specific challenge. But if you are thinking about ideas, the the thing is, the ideas that are posted online, gazillion other people have already done those. But what's nice and interesting, if teams come together, follow some simple steps of, of uh, brainstorming, and that's what we like to do in our programs, to have a structured, safe place for them to uh, structure, because there are steps how we evolve our discussions. 
to come up with an idea and then go with it. But for a journal themes, I think these are some of the themes of, for the future. And it's, it's, some of it is already happening. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other question from the students or parents? This is Naveed here. So um, thank you, uh, um, brothers, for organizing this. Um, I found this very, very inform informative. I'm the scout master at uh, Troop 2060. Uh, first time I've seen this program, um, and obviously hence why the, the, the questions. Um, I'm, I'm actually not yet a scout master. I'm a assistant scout master, so I'll become a scout master to, when we reach out. But uh, I hope, uh, I mean, for me, this was really inform informative. And, and I think the, as you started, right, I love the way you started. Uh, you know, you, you, you framed it for and made it really interesting to the, the, uh, the audience, I, the, the scouts, the boy scouts, the girl scouts, the young kids, uh, who are, and, you know, obviously, uh, no, everyone wants to travel, right? And, uh, and it's a really exciting time in terms of, you know, how, um, the opportunities that are that are out there they're just so vast right obviously the questions were for me around ethical and 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 uh, around uh, how data is used because i think there's also a a very important um kind of uh you know um theme that's happened over the last so many years whether it's snowden whether it's the uh, netflix the documentary around social dilemma whether yeah. it's um, you know Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica, right, buying elections, you know, oh, yeah. and data is being used in very bad ways, yeah. uh, and that's the reason why I think uh, uh, I think it's sometimes it, it can be discouraging. I've also seen a new trend called digital detoxification or whatever. Right. I going from smartphones to like you know button phones, right? Uh, so uh, I think the challenge that I see with youngsters today is is that they are um they are incredibly in you know uh, uh i would say um what's the word i'm looking for i think consumed with um well you know their devices right and uh, how, and and they are having focus issues so the fact that you are creating this environment for them around stem and enabling them to think in a safe environment and brainstorm and I, i'm sure it motivates more focus and thought that is something that I think is definitely a differentiation I see. So I definitely would love to engage and, you know, learn more and have more of my scouts uh, join. A little bit disappointed right. that more didn't join, but, um, but inshallah, we'll, ha we'll take the recording and we'll show it to them. And uh, right. once again, thank you so much for all the presentation. It's a pleasure. Look, uh, let me correct you, or not, not just correct, <laughs> amplify. I didn't ask if you like to travel, I told them, what if you could travel for free and they pay you for travel? That <laughs> yeah, was no, the no. icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. No, I think, you know, uh, I, I know my own children, they've talked about travel and, and yeah. you know, I mean, because we, as, uh, you know, Asian parents, we just drum it into them that doctor, engineer, or lawyer, or account, whatever, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I think, you know, they, they have to enjoy something. And, you know, I think there's many other careers out there, per yeah. se. But like you said, the mixture of, let's say, MD and doing an MBA, right? Or an right. MD doing a PhD, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of focus on how data is going to be used in, exactly. in, in, in a very compliant way. And you think that in, in, in itself is a massive space. I mean, just to add here a minute or two, I know a friend of mine in the UK, he's a regulate, regulatory affairs um, uh, person and you know, I mean, Alhamdulillah, you know, he's a millionaire now, just in regulatory affairs. I mean, this is, this, is, this is 20 years before big data came around, came around, right? So I think our students don't know this. And if we can nurture, uh, create an environment where they can know about all of these things, I right. think um, that can only be a positive thing. Yes, sir. And, mm -hmm. and another interesting thing, as a parent, I agree with you about their devices, immersion in devices and lack of focus. But... Let me tell you something interesting. The way you and I are worried about uh, privacy and uh, security, they are not. They're ready to share their every moment of the day 
indiscriminately with everyone all across the world, which for us may be a scary thing, but they will be, they would come into, they, their framework will not worry or care about that. And I believe that will free them. They will, that will give them many, many more opportunities. But yes, regulatory issues will evolve as well with them. But you and I will have a very different view or maybe we'll scoff at that one day, like our elders scoff at us these days. <laughs> but I'm ready to evolve with them. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to be a little bit of a visionary. You know, you, there'll always be some critics. Uh, but, um, you know, I think um, it, it's like with many other things, like, you know, I mean, you can look at companies that people, you were giving an example of, you know, Bill Gates and, you know, Microsoft and so on. You know, um, there's examples in in history where, you know, Ericsson could have bought, Ericsson is a big, you know, mobile giant, right? Um, they could have bought Cisco when it was a baby. And they said, who's Cisco? What's the internet? Well, yeah. forget that. So. Here you are. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Ball, in the interest of time, should we wrap up? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you very, very much, Dr. Ball, for your time. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. And I was amazed by the interaction, the amount of, uh, you know, the conversations on the chat box and the comments, this was probably the best thing that I could see uh, from today's presentation. Um, so thank you very much, students. Uh, you made the day for both Dr. Iqbal and for me. And I'm pretty sure the parents and the Scoutmasters who are also attending, they would have appreciated. So please keep up the spirit. We want you to be the leaders in STEM, right? Uh, we want you to explore the word travel as uh, Dr. Ball said and travel for free, right? If you become a researcher, a PhD or some really great, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, professional, it will definitely pay you off. So um, work, work hard, smart and hard and find ways to become a more productive, more valuable for yourself and for your family. And as uh, Dr. Kwal said, um, STEM Matters is here. Our mission is to uh, help you uh, become better at uh, STEM, excel in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and environment matters. And we will nurture your critical and analytical thinking skills in a structured way, in a safe space. Uh, so our information session for uh, next uh, set, um, uh, spring session is on December 13th, uh, Sunday at uh, noon. So I have posted the link. I'm again going to uh, post the link. So please feel free to register. It's a free session. And you can um, hopefully learn about our plans, our game, uh, our, our roadmap, how we work, how we help uh, kids to become smarter and better. So please join us. Um, so with that, um, have a blessed day. Take care all, all of you. Goodbye. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, Jazakallah khair.